Well, my name is Alan Cleaver. Um, I'm uh, 62 and live in Whitehaven and I write books on local history, but particularly with an interest in the folklore and um, ghosts and uh, strange goings on in Cumbria. Um, but my background is in journalism. Um, I, I was heavily involved in psychic research when I was younger, um, helped found ASAP, which is one of the national psychic research associations. And as a journalist, even worked for a couple of years on Psychic News, which uh, was a spiritualist newspaper dealing with um, paranormal phenomena. Um, so, uh, as I say, my interest in the paranormal straight on is, is, is less these days, but I'm certainly interested in fairies, ghosts and uh, the legends of, of Cumbria. Well, the Solway Spaceman is a photograph that was taken by Jim Templeton in 1964. Um, he's dead now, but his daughter um, and um, his wife were with him on the on Bruff Marsh, on the Solway Marshes. And he was taking a number of pictures of them. Um, of course, it was the old, age, old days of uh, film and none of this digital camera stuff where you can see things instantly. Took a picture of his daughter sitting, holding a small posy of flowers. And um, when the film came back from Boots the Chemist, as used to develop them in those days, um, he was amazed to see that behind his daughter seemed to be a spaceman, um, certainly seemed to be somebody in a white suit uh, with a black visor over his face or her face, um, standing behind his daughter, something he'd not seen at the time nor as his wife and daughter. And um, he told the local newspaper and it was picked up by the national newspaper and then the international newspapers. And um, I'm sure he dined out on it very well for, for many years to come. Yeah, I mean, um, David Clark, I think, was the, the main researcher uh, on this one. And uh, he did some, some fantastic work, as he always does. And he investigated as much as, as, much as he could. Um, and uh, one of the first things he looked at was a claim by Jim Templeton that on the same day a missile launch in South Australia had to be abandoned because two figures were seen on the launch pad um, and these two figures looked exactly like the spaceman in his photograph. Um, and I think David Clark more or less destroyed that as just a sort of uh, bit of wishful thinking on Jim Templeton's part and he could find no sort of evidence that that event actually happened. But he did look also at uh, what's known as Men in Black and this is almost a phenomenon of its own um, where people who've had perhaps close encounters with UFOs or aliens um, days later are visited by people all dressed in black uh, who ask them strange questions and investigate them and they they claim to be perhaps government agents or whatever but these people are then never traceable and uh, it's suggested that it's perhaps some sort of intergalactic police force that's checking out uh, these accounts um, so so the men in black and then David looked at the technical side with the camera and everything else like that and he realised that with the viewfinder on this camera you didn't always see the whole scene that you photographed. The photograph contained more than the view camera. So he postulated that he didn't see anything at the time because he could only see his daughter holding the flowers and that there was indeed somebody standing behind him. But David came to the conclusion in the end that it was uh, his wife who was running past behind, but the foibles of uh, negative film and, and, and chemicals of that age meant that the picture was overexposed and um, rather than being a spaceman it was a, his wife wearing a white suit uh, with her black hair providing the visor. Um, so you pay your money, you take your choice. I, I think rather the opposite, that Cumbria almost seems to have a dearth of uh, UFO sightings, apart from a couple of, of famous ones, including the Solway Spaceman. Um, I think researchers should actually be looking at 
why don't UFOs visit Cumbria? Um, and that might be more frequent. I suspect in a sense, um, part of the answer to that is the fact that there aren't that many UFO researchers in Cumbria. And that sounds a bit trite, but we know that Milton Keynes is the absolute hotspot um, for UFOs in Great Britain. But that seems purely because uh, Ken Phillips, the researcher there, um, is so active and so good at tracking down accounts that he just finds more UFO sightings than anywhere else. So I don't think UF Cumbria can sort of lay claim to being particularly UFO centric, um, but it certainly has um, its fair share of strange and wonderful things going on. Um, I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, stranger things have happened. Um, I mean, it's interesting. The more, I mean, I, I've been researching, the, the, I researched the paranormal for probably 10, 15 years when I was younger, less so now. Um, but the more that you sort of research something, the more you get sucked into it. Um, and I can't say I've ever had men in black turn up at anything that I'm doing, but certainly strange things start to happen to you, um, particularly on poltergeist cases and, and ghosts and hauntings. And it's almost as though you, you can catch them. You know, it's like, like COVID, you know, you can, you can catch a poltergeist like you can catch the common cold. Um, so the more you sort of plug into something and research it, um, yeah, I, 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 I'd keep an eye out and uh, keep a camera with you. Um, you might well experience some, something slightly odd during your researches.